What is up, people? Welcome back to Blue Chip Prospect for another scouting report. Today's video will be on my boy Cole Eiserman. Outside of that, I have nothing else to say or to announce, so let's just get this thing started right away. All right, so to start this thing up, Eiserman is an American left winger that stands at six foot and weights around 195 to 200 pounds, so no small kid. Uh, and when he wants, he can absolutely use that 200 pounds. Now, the most important part of this preamble is that he is one of the youngest players in the whole entire draft. Being born on August 29th, he's basically two weeks away from being eligible for next year's draft. Now, in case you didn't know, this guy scores goal like a lot of goal. Like, he scored tons of goal and basically any way you want it. His 36 goals and 35 games would probably support this claim also. In terms of goals and nothing else, he's just a little short of... Caulfield in his draft year where he scored 72 goals for a 1.125 goal per game pace. Eiserman right now with 36 goals in 35 game is on a 1.02 goal per game pace. I think it's fair to assume that if Eiserman was paired with a center like uh, Zgres or Jack Hughes for example, he would be in a similar goal scoring pace if not better. So there's always that to keep in mind. But one way or another, they are both number one and number two at the top of the list in terms of goal scoring pace and the rest is not even close. Now in terms of points and not just goals, Iserman has 57 points in 35 games for a 1.63 points per game pace which puts him 7th on the draft eligible player in the history of the US NTDP. So not too bad, huh? For someone that everybody is pushing down their list because right now it seems like it's a trend or something, the guy has a better point production pace than Cole Caulfield and Cooley and Zgres and McGorty and Boldy. So yeah, not everything is comparable one to one like that, but it sure looks like an indication that some people might be a little bit overreacting. I understand not ranking him at number two like many thought it would be before the season started, but 13th like FC Hockey or 8th in North American list uh, ranking by Central is uh, pushing it a bit in my opinion. Look, everybody's entitled to their own opinion and I'm not here to step on other people's opinion and tell you that mine is worth more than theirs. But boy, outside the top 10 is rough. Always in my humble opinion. It's like, it's a bit like forgetting he scores goal like no one before ever could. And I would understand if all his goals came from one way, but as we will see later in the video, they come from everywhere and every way imaginable. So, yeah, there's that. In terms of tools, Eisenman isn't a well-rounded beast like Gatton, for example. I think he's a fine skater, and while he can pick up some speed, he isn't a dynamic or explosive skater. Same with his, with his compete, it's fine, especially in the offensive zone, but it's definitely lacking and inconsistent in the defensive zone. He definitely, he definitely has some strong puck skills and can make some very nice passes and plays here and there, but he's a shooter and he's basically a shooter in every way you can think of. I kind of look at playmakers and pure scorers differently when I grade their hockey sense, and while I think there's some work to be done there, he definitely has some very good IQ and especially his awareness. But where he shines the most, and I think that was pretty predictable, is the stick and ling or puck and ling and his shot, who both got high end and elite grade respectively. It's what his game is all about. So anyway, let's go take a look at all this. So for the skating, there's really not that much to talk about, actually. Like I said, it's a, it's an average grade, but he has a smooth stride and can really pick up some speed in a neutral zone. He accelerates through crossovers and he keeps his route pretty in a straight line. He's more of a north-south skater than an east-west, especially in transition. He's He doesn't really use his skating to deceive or doesn't really create like space and gaps by playing with his speed it's functional but it's not something that i would call a strength he isn't an explosive skater but he does have some power in those legs and he can really shield the puck sometimes by leaning on defenders and using his powerful stride to push himself toward the net again i wouldn't say he's explosive but he can really get into pocket of space and pocket of ice quickly enough to take a shot before it closes down on him so there's always that so he doesn't have iron maneuverability, I would say, but I don't see his skating as something that will prevent him from reaching his potential, nor do I see it as an element that will really help him get there. Before we jump to the next section of the video, please take the time to like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel and it helps me reach more people who likes hockey and want to talk about prospects. So 
please just do it. Thanks. When it comes to hockey sense for a guy like Eisenman, I mostly look at four things. And the first one is spatial awareness, and it's followed by instinct, play reading, and decision making. Eisenman's awareness is as good as good as it gets, in my opinion. He always knows where he is on the ice in relation to teammates and opponents. But it's not just that. His position is always right, and he always finds ways to be forgotten and jumps into the gaps in coverage. He's very good at knowing when to drive and when to lay back a little bit and trail the play. I also think he's really good at reading the plays and adjust accordingly. He anticipates passes. He knows he knows where those gaps in coverage are going to be to open and when they are created. He waits for defenders to be drawn in by the puck carrier and jumps into that pocket to rip a shot. So all is good except for decision making. I think his shot selection is top notch. He's also very adaptable, but his decision is always and always shoot. Even when the bad, even when he's in a bad position or a bad angle, or even when he knows that the shot won't go through, he still shoot instead of pass. I think that he would open even more scoring opportunities for himself if sometimes he passed instead of shooting and tried to dangle the whole team to rip one on net. If he can clean up his quick decision making, he's going to be even better. When he when he has time, it's fine. I don't see anything that stands out. But under pressure, those decision those decisions that has to be made in a split second, they always end up being a shot. So overall, it's very good. His off puck intelligence is as good as it gets. So I think in the end, it's going to be a pretty big strength for his game. I think it's kind of becoming a trend where I don't have many stick handling clips for the players that I'm rating highly in that category. The only player that I don't think I'll have problem with is probably Demidov since all the clips are him dangling the whole team. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, let's get back on track. One of the things with Eisenman is that a bit like Katten, he has high he's, he is a high end handler, but he isn't a spectacular type of play type of guy. He, his main goal is always to rip a shot on net. So he has really, really quick hands and it's tough for defenders around him to touch the puck. When he's in traffic and when he gets to the puck, he has the speed and the precision in his hands and his handling to keep the puck away, move the sticks out of the way, and shoot the puck on net. That's, bas that's basically all he needs. You want your shooter to shoot from the middle of the eyes, but at the same time, it's an area of the eyes that's pretty much well covered. So if you don't have the ability to stick handle in tight, it always results on a stick on puck deflection. Just ask at Kaneyemi, you'll see. Eisenman has that ability and more. He's also very, very good at catching passes that are less than ideal. For, for Abs fan, again, one of the major difference between Caulfield scoring goals and Caulfield not scoring goals it's the puck reception. If you look at the stretch of the season where nothing was working for him, he was never in control of the puck on the reception. He was creating delays before he could make anything happen, giving enough time for the defenders to close on him. Now that he found back his crazy hands, he makes play happen night after night. Eisenman is like that, at least at the junior level. His reception and control is off the charts, so for him, it's not about being flashy, it's about creating space to shoot the puck cleanly, and he's high in at that ability. So look, it's not news to anybody anymore that Iserman isn't the most diligent worker in the defensive zone and isn't back checking like his life depending on it, but there's a glimpse of it sometimes. Sometimes he tracks backs and apply back pressure and sometimes he does nothing. <laughs> sometimes he doesn't even extend his arm to block a pass in a defensive zone. So there's a ton of work to be done to make him more competitive and more involved. But at the same time, you want him in the offensive zone, not deep in his own zone. You want a certain amount of defense effort from all your players, but you don't need all of them to be Patrice Bergeron. But yes, in the end, he will probably need to be paired with a responsible player on his line. In the offensive zone, though, I think he competes well enough to give him an average grade. He doesn't go deep into the corners to get the pucks most days, and he doesn't really do his own dirty work like many people like to say. But... He is involved along the board. He's also sneaky strong, so he gets his fair share of wins in puck battles. When he sees an opportunity, he's willing to forecheck hard to regain the control of the puck, and he's pretty good at it too. He also attacks the middle of the ice consistently. He's not just a one-timer machine. He gets to the middle to take a shot. He's not afraid to get to the net and stay in close periphery for rebounds opportunities. So yes, consistency in the work rate is an issue. Yes, he cheats, and yes, uh, he doesn't get the retrievals himself, but a lot of this is coachable and you're also not drafting a gold per game USNTDP player to be a two-way monster. You're drafting him to score goals, 
So you got to keep this in perspective. I think this is a really underrated part of his game. People always see how one dimensional he is. And while I totally agree with that, I think a lot of people just brush off the fact that he does have the puck skills and the on ice intelligence and the vision to create chances with his passing. The decision making, especially under pressure, needs to progress, but he consistently made beautiful reads this season, paired with nice and clean passes. So to me, it's just a underutilized asset that with time, coaching, and experience will open up just more diversified offense in this game. Elite offensive players usually become elite offensive players. Maybe the playmaking part of his overall game is not as developed and probably never will be, but you can see it. You can see that there's massive talent to work on that side of the puck too. And it's not just the 5 or the 10-foot passes and the given and goes and all those simple plays. He has that cross-ice passing ability. He has that play-against-the-grain vision. I'm not sure how to put it into words, but you know those plays where on TV, even with a bird's-eye-view camera, everything points to the play going one way, but he finds that player that's going against the grain and he creates an open look. He has that type of skill and vision. I try to limit the time I come back to Caulfield in this video because <laughs> I don't want to always come back to the simple comparison, but there's just so many parallels to be drawn between them. Caulfield was never seen as a passer, but the puck skills to execute passes was always evident. But through decision making and inexperience, he always come back to what he known best. He just shot the puck on net. This season, while working on many elements of his game, he's becoming... He's becoming, he became amazing at creating looks through his passing game. The most one-dimensional player suddenly became multi-dimensional because the skills were always there but needed experience and coaching. That's exactly what I envision when I watch Iserman. Now, I'm sorry for the cheap comparison, but it looks so obvious to me that a similar path awaits Iserman if he wants it. Now, this is the one dimension where he's one-dimensional, but... In this one dimension, he's actually multi-dimensional. <laughs> Look, we never know with goal scorers in junior. They can become anything from players like Stamkos and Debrinkat to, I don't know, players like, like Manta. Uh, but when someone can score so many ways, it's always a good indicator of future success. In Eisenman's case, everything starts with the one-timer. He gets into space and he can unleash one of those slappers that's just unstoppable. Whether it's short side or against the goalie's movement, it's going in, basically. I think everybody will know where Eisenman will be on the power play, but I don't think they'll be able to prevent the shot from going in. <laughs> He's just so fast and heavy. There's so much power in his shot, and he just puts everything into it. And on the wrister and the snapshot, he really has that Pedersen slingshot release, kinda. <laughs> he has his hands tucked in to the very last second where he brings them up and just whip the stick by pulling with the top end, pushing with the bottom one, and just rotating his whole upper body, putting all of his strength into it. It's very deceiving and very well hidden, but very fast and heavy. He really knows how to sell the pass and shoot, or at least make it appear like the passing option is still open, but it really isn't. Uh, when he's shooting from a standstill, you never know when the shot is coming because he hides his intentions really well. And in motion, it's even better. Not many players can release the puck this fast with all that power behind it while skating full tilt. Uh, there's basically no difference between him skating and handling the puck on his forehand and him releasing the puck. The only indicator a goalie can have is that split second pullback. But once he realized he was pulling back to shoot it, it's already too late. So... His one-timer is lethal. His wrister and snapshot are also lethal. Uh, he can shoot lasers from a, stand from a standstill or in motion. He can one-time the puck in motion with unstoppable force behind it. He can sell a pass even though everyone knows he's shooting. He can shoot with a pullback or with the puck in front of him. He consistently goes to the middle of the ice to shoot. He hangs around the net or in peripheries for rebounds and deflection. And he finishes his route to the net before repositioning. What else do you want from his shot? A Matthew type catch and release? Well, you got it too. <laughs> now let's be careful. I'm not saying that he's like Matthews or he has the same potential as Matthews. What I'm saying is that every fans in the NHL and every team are terrified of Matthews catching the puck on his forehand close to the net because no one can catch and shoot with that much power in a fraction of a second. Well, Iserman has that type of potential to be very scary too. Maybe not to the same extent, 
but when he catches it on his forehand either close to the net or in motion it's gone in a split second and it's in it's with incredible force behind it so yeah right now he's one dimensional but it's the most important dimension in the sport and he does it like very few can do it. That's more than enough to build a very dangerous player. Minimizing his weaknesses and building around his strength, you'll still get a player that's uniquely talented. So in the end, I have him firmly in my top five. And if he gets out of there before the draft, it will be because other players have stole my heart, <laughs> not because his play dropped him out of it. In terms of comparison, there's no perfect match in my opinion. The Caulfield one is easy because the strengths are, are similar, but Eisenman is bigger and he uses body more than Caulfield ever did. And I think the shot is actually pretty different too. So there's also some Matthews element in his game, but Matthews is just way more assertive in the way he uses his body and is also a generational goal scorer. So there's that. So maybe a mix of both, but really I just have no NHL comps that come to my mind. So it is what it is can't win them all <laughs> anyway i hope you enjoyed thanks for listening see you in the next one peace